Okay. So, basically, this whole video is someone remaking Plants vs. Zombies in 3D. But I think they did this in just, like, an amazing way. It's four months remaking Plants vs. Zombies, but in 3D. Four Look at that! It's so cool! Plants for Zombies one's a master. That's so cool. The game in 3D using the world's most advanced game engine, Unreal Engine 5. Plus, I'm gonna make it downloadable for you guys to play. Yeah! I'm gonna base this remake off of stage one. It's which downloadable. Means stage one plants, these zombies, the environment, and honestly a million other things. But by far the most important thing is figuring out what It's so impressive! Luckily, I recently <laughs> Remade the original Metroid in this voxel art style. Recently, so why not use it again? Let's start by modeling the stage bum, one plants. Bum, 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 bum. Right? I just gotta place a little block here, another little guy there, and oh look, I already made a piece of grass. This is Yay. gonna be a piece of cake. Huh? Well, that took a while. Or at least the models are looking good. That and took a hot second. You expect the plants to have faces, but I tried, and honestly, they look kind of goofy. So I took this opportunity to add the faces in Blender, where I can make finer changes. Now look at this guy. <laughs> He's so done, cute now. I'm shooting whatnot, but before I do that, let's make a regular zombie. I just made eight plants in no time, so how hard could it be to make a single zombie? Oh my god, what have I done? You know what? Sometimes it's better to just delete things and start. <laughs> you looked eyes. I wonder why the arms and head are disattached. It's because just like in the original, I want the arms and head to pop off when they take damage. Also, I noticed that the zombies have multiple walk animations. So to keep that variety, I made a few different walk animations, plus an easy- So much work! And the reason why the zombies are facing to the side is so that they look better from this view, which is the gameplay view. I also went ahead and coded the zombie dismemberment tech, and to test it out, I quickly programmed the pea shooter to shoot, and uh -huh. now, hopefully, it works? Flawless. <laughs> Flawless! <laughs> okay, I fixed the problem and I also added some VFX and sound effects. And some more plants and zombies. This is already so cool to see, but there's a lot more to make. So let's get rid of these guys. It is impressive. By stage one. We're gonna use this as a guide for building out the environment. So from the gameplay view, this will be the house. I mean, yeah, the head the did fall off, and so. The road, a graveyard for the zombies. All right, time to build up the lawn. First thing I did was make the model. In this case, it's just mm -hmm. directing. Then I made a grass texture, added the rows and columns, and the grass. To tie it all together, I added wind, clouds, and these tiny little flowers, just like in the original. So Flaps. in Plants for Zombies 1, there are 10 short levels per stage, but I just won't be able to make all that. Instead, we can make one 20 minute long challenging super level. And because of that, I thought it would be a good idea to make the lawn 9x12 instead of 5x9 like in the original, so that the pacing of the level stays exciting now that it's much longer. I also wanted the lawn to start small and for more lanes to roll out as you play. So to do that, I modeled a cylinder, added grass to it, and gave it a rolling animation and some VFX. Then, I split the lawn into separate lanes so that they can roll out individually. It's so cute! Then I finished the area around the lawn by adding the fence, the sidewalk, and painting in some more grass. Now that the lawn is done, I really want to finish coating the plants. Right now, they just sit there while the zombies get a free meal. Chomp, First chomp. The sunflower. It produces sun for us to collect to spend on plants. So, to make the sun that it drops, I started with a sphere, added a glow, a trail, and some physics to make it bounce. Then I gave the sunflower this sun spawn animation. You all together, <laughs> it looks like this. The animation, the sound effect. Then I gave the sunflower this sun spawn animation. <laughs> and all together, it looks like this. <laughs> <laughs> also, because of the larger lawn, you end up with a lot more sunflowers and way too much sun to click on one by one like in the original. So I did our fingers a favor and made sun auto collect near the cursor. I also just went Good ahead stuff. and made the UI. Next up is the cherry bomb. This one explodes, turning zombies into ash. I made the explosion VFX first. Then to incorporate the ash element, I tinted the zombies dark gray when hit by a cherry bomb. Mm -hmm. I also played around with the zombie physics so that when they die to a cherry bomb, it feels more impactful. This is a thousand zombies and this is a single cherry bomb. Nail that. 
The chomper eats zombies that are close, then chews for a while before eating again. I started by making the attack and chewing animations. Then I made it detect zombies two tiles in front, chomp if a zombie's in range, and chew for any time I set before being able to attack again. Let's see them in action. Perfect. Nom. 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 Potato mine takes a moment to arm, then explodes if a zombie gets too close. So I made this mini explosion be effect, added a burrow and unburrow state, then I made the light flicker faster the closer zombies get until it explodes. Oof. The walnut defends plants and changes visually based on the damage it takes. For this adorable little guy, all I had to do was model two other states and give them more. <laughs> it was so Anyways, sad! The front lines of <laughs> Finally, we have the pea shooters. Programmatically, they all shoot using the same method. They cast a line trace, and if that detects a zombie, they start firing. Snipe! The, are, the repeater shoots two peas at a time, and the snow pea slows zombies, tints them blue, and plays an ice crackling sound effect when they get hit for the first time. I also made the shovel mechanic, which lets you dig up plants. Now that the plants are done, <laughs> let's move over to the side and build out the graveyard. In the original, zombies spawn from the Not right the edge of the screen and directly onto your lawn. But I thought it would be cool if the zombies spawned from a graveyard further away and appeared from a thick and ominous purple fog, inspired by this loading screen image from the original. It's so started, pretty! I used the blocks and grass from earlier to make the ground. Then, I modeled some gravestones and placed them to make a graveyard. For the ominous fog, I made this massive V effect and placed that on the road. It looks so good! I added a purple tint to the ground, textured the road, and added vents that glow green just like in the reference. Now when you're playing, you can look yes. over to the right and actually see the zombies coming from the graveyard. I also went ahead and made the pylon and bucket zombies. And I gave the zombies a grunt sound effect which plays more It's such a cool on style! On screen. Also, since it would be way too easy if the plants can shoot the zombies all the way in the graveyard, I limited the pea shooter's max range to the sidewalk. Next up is the house. I couldn't resist making it possible to plant on the roof like in stage 5. The problem was, in 3D, only sunflowers would make sense on the roof. Mm -hmm. Pea shooters can only shoot what's directly in front of them, and why would you plant any of these? So, I decided to make the single pea shooter stand out from the other pea shooters and give it the ability to aim. Bum, 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 bum. Which, I admit, feels a little bit illegal, but... It's fun to see all the pea shooters <laughs> fall the curse. Look at that, that's so cute! Oh, and the house model is still just a gray box, so I fixed that, and I made a bunch of props and placed them around the map. Now you can plant single pea shooters on the roof and they actually work. They can even peek over the edge of the house. Peek! Now on to the super level. Up to now, I've just been spawning zombies at random so that I could test them. But in the original, levels start off easy and slowly ramp up in difficulty. Plus, there are red flag waves that spawn even more zombies. So in short, I coded my own version of that system and made the level progress UI. And no, that's not a UI bug. I just added a ton of waves. Now the level starts off with a three ton waves and less zombies. And eventually reaches a state of total chaos. <laughs> It's winnable, by the way, I promise. I also want to add a day-night cycle into the level inspired by the nighttime stages. And that requires a background which we currently don't have. So I made a sky backdrop, some cloud VFX, fog cards, a sun, and a moon. Then I placed those in the background along with some houses on the sides. And now we have this. That looks so cool! I made it so that halfway through the level, it changes from day to night. And I also added some rain VFX and some owl sounds rain. to tie the mood all together. Also at night, sun stops falling from the sky and the house lights turn on like in the original. Oh, and I almost forgot, I still need to make the lawnmowers. You guys Lawn are life! definitely gonna need them. It's so good! What a beautiful video! Yeah, 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 we can have the video.